Hey guys, Aaron here with ScaredDog.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Flash quiz in Flash CS5. This tutorial was requested by Jim on my website at ScaredDog.com. Uh, if you've got a tutorial you'd like for me to make, please visit ScaredDog.com and request a tutorial and I'll see what I can do for you. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our stage. Now you can set up your stage however you want to here. I've just got mine set up like this. Uh, what we're going to do is come down here to the layer and we're going to double click this and I'm just going to call this intro and on our intro screen of course we want to give people the option to click here to play so I'm just going to take my text tool drag my text area out on the screen and type click here to play now when you select this section here what you can do is you can come over here to your font and you can left click and drag to the right or drag to the left and that will increase or decrease your font. You can also set the color here and we're just going to move this right there. Now we need to make this a button here so what we're going to do is we're going to select click here to play and we're going to right click go down to convert to symbol. We want our type to be set as button not movie clip not graphic set it as button and I always name my buttons BTN. I start that off uh, with BTN so I know it's a button and we'll call this BTN Play. Tell it OK. Now we're going to create a new layer and we're going to double click it and you create a new layer by coming down here in the left hand corner and clicking that little tab that says new layer. And we're going to double click. I'm going to call this Q&A for my questions and answer. And then we're going to advance to frame 2. Now what you can do is skip over frame 2 and press F6. And then we can come down over here to the intro and press F6 as well. Now what that does is that copies that uh, previous frame, makes a keyframe for us here, and then it also brings over the uh, frame for uh, the visuals from frame 1. So we come over here into frame 2. And now I can click off of here because again when you've got frame 2 selected you see everything selected here so I don't want to hit delete yet so I just click anywhere off of the screen there and I just select click here to play and we'll delete that so frame 1 shows click here to play frame 2 has it deleted this just gives us a consistent look throughout now we're going to type in our question and again you can set the font I'm going to set our font size to about 20 and the question is going to be how many lifeboats did the Titanic whoops, Titanic, have? And just so you know, the answer is 20. Okay, so we've got our question set here. Actually, what I did, if you notice here, I've got it selected on intro. That should have been up here in my Q&A. So what I could do is I could just select that, control X to delete it, then I come up here to my my layer, Q&A layer, and click the second frame and press control V and that puts it on the correct layer for me. Okay, let's position this. Now let's select our text here and we'll build out our answers. Now answer 1 will be 10. Okay, we'll move that here. Now what we can do is we can select this, press control C and I believe it's Command C for you guys on the Mac. And then Control V will paste, or Command V, and we'll paste this a couple more times here. Now what we can do is come over here and select our text tool, and change this to a B, and say 20. And again, B is the correct answer. C, change that to 30 then D and we'll set this as none. Okay, we've got our intro which is this and then we've got our Q&A layer which is that. Now we're going to create a new layer for correct and then create a new layer for wrong and again you just double click on the layers to rename it Now for correct, we're going to advance to the third one. See how we're kind of building up here, one, two, three. I'm going to press F6 right there. Create a new frame and then we're going to advance out here and do our fourth frame, press F6. So we've got our correct one set and our wrong one set with a keyframe on each one. 
and then let's build out our intro we just F6 and F6 and that'll make it consistent throughout okay so now we're on correct we're gonna come over here and select the text tool and when it's correct we want it to show green and say that is correct you win Just position that right there, raise the font size, and you can drag the corners and bring that out there. Okay. Then wrong. We're going to jump up over here to frame four on our wrong layer. Select our text tool. We want it to be red. And we'll put that is wrong. You lose. Okay. Drag that out. and position that about right there. Now of course if someone loses or they get the wrong answer what we want to do is give them the option to start back over but we don't want to send them all the way back to frame one where it says click to play that's a little redundant there we're going to send them to frame two <clears throat> and I'll cover that here in just a moment. So we're on wrong let's go here to our text tool and type in play again Actually, let's do this because I had to click here to play again. Let's position this. Let's change that to blue. Okay, so we got everything set up here. We've got our intro screen. We've got our question screen, question and answers. We've got our correct screen and our wrong screen. Now let's create one more layer here double click it, let's call this actions okay? because we want it to stop on each layer and I'm going to show you why if we do control test scene that's not exactly what we want it to do and what's happening is your timeline here is progressing and then it's looping it's progressing and then it's looping so it just keeps going back and forth and back and forth so in our actions layer what we want to do is select that first frame there right click and go to actions Let's just type in stop, open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. Let's just copy, so highlight that, and you can right click and say copy. Skip over to frame two. Let's press F6, create a new keyframe there. Right click, actions, and we right click, paste. Exit out of that. Skip over to frame three, press F6, right click, go to actions, come up here, right click, paste, and hit X. Go to the last frame there, select it, F6, right click, go to actions, and then paste. And What that did is that stops it on each frame that we have here, so it won't create, as you see here, if we go to test scene, it stops it, it's not looping right now. So now let's create the functionality. This is the last thing that we need to do here. So we've got click here to play. Earlier we've created the button and if you click your library up here you'll see that we've got button play. So that's already a button. So all we need to do is highlight just the click here to play and come over here to your code snippets. Press code snippet, go to timeline navigation, then go to click to go click to go to this uh, go to frame and stop. So we're going to double click that. Now it requires us to call this an instance. Now again, if I were to put just the word play here, that's a, um, uh, a code that, uh, that Flash uses. So we, if we do play, we're going to get an error. So what I normally do is just instance INST and play. We'll tell it OK. And you'll see here it says INST play. That's where we named our instance. If I just said play there, it would throw us an error. So that's why I always use like the BTNs or the INST just to just so it doesn't uh, throw any errors with the already predefined code through uh, action script. Now where it says go to and stop, it says five here. Well, we actually want it to go to frame two because remember frame two is where our question and answer was. So go to and stop, change that to two. Okay. So what that's going to do is when we click click here to play, it's going to advance us to frame two. Now we've got four questions here. All these need to be buttons. And remember, correct is third frame, 
wrong is fourth frame. So I want to say third for the correct answer and fourth for the wrong one. That's where we're advancing to. <clears throat> so A, highlight that, select that, right click, convert to symbol. And the way that I do the, my buttons, again, BTN, and my questions whenever I'm creating a quiz, so this is my question one, answer one, so Q1A1, BTN Q1A1, and that's a button. So I go to B, right click, convert to symbol, and then I call this button BTN, question one, answer two, Q1A2. C, right click, convert to symbol, BTN, Q1A3, okay, then right click, convert to symbol, BTN, Q1A4. And again, in your library, that just shows up over here so you can see all of our buttons and everything like that. So I know whenever I look over here, that BTN, it's a button. So we go back to our properties. We've set up all of our buttons now. Now we just need to add the code. So again, B was the correct answer. That was on frame three that we want to move forward to. So what we do, select B, come up here to code snippet, click to go to frame and stop, double click that, instanced INST Q1 A2 question 1 answer 2 tell it OK it's going to come up with our code here now you see this is the stop that we added earlier so it's just going to add code to our existing uh, action script here so go to and stop we want it to be 3 we exit out of that now everything else is going to be 4 so we highlight A code snippet go to frame and stop INST instance Q1A1 tell it OK we want it to advance to 4 because that was incorrect select C go to code snippet click to go to frame and stop double click that INST Q1A3 OK we want it to go to frame 4 because that was an incorrect answer and then the last one highlight it, come over here to code snippet, click to go to frame and stop, double click that, BTN, or excuse me, instance INST, Q1A4. Tell it OK, we want it to progress to frame 4. Then tell it OK. Then the last thing we need to do is we come over here to frame 4, where we had the return, the click here to play again. So I'm going to select that, just the click here to play again, right click, convert to symbol, we're going to call this BTN, and then call this replay. Tell it OK. Then with this selected, we're going to come up here, we're going to create an instance, because we're, or excuse me, code snippet that's going to send us back to frame 2, so they can play again. <clears throat> so with this selected, come up here and hit your code snippet, click to go to frame and stop, double click, Call this instance, INST, replay. Tell it OK. We want it to go to frame 2. Exit out of there. Now one of the reasons before we uh, test the scene here, one of the reasons that I did the Q1A1 and everything like that is in case you went to that is correct UN and you decided that you wanted to have more questions here and then send them further down the time frame, that allows you to do that. So you can do like Q2 answer 1 for question 2 answer 1 and so on and so forth. And that way all of your, uh, your instance names and everything like that won't conflict with each other. But anyway, let's give this a shot and see if it works. So let's go to Control, Test Scene, <clears throat> click here to play. How many lifeboats did the Titanic have? Let's do an incorrect answer, so we'll say 10. That is wrong, you lose. Click here to play again. How many lifeboats did the Titanic have? That's wrong, okay. That's wrong, all right, now let's use the correct answer. All right, guys, that's it. It's that easy to make a Flash quiz in Flash CS5. Again, if you got any questions or comments, please uh, rate and leave, uh, leave your comments below. If you have a tutorial you'd like for me to make, please visit scaredog.com and click the Request a Tutorial. I hope this helped you out. Uh, thank you very much for visiting.